Monkey Island was one of those game series that I always heard about growing up, but never got around to playing any of them myself. I knew them more by reputation than anything else. And from what I understand, this is one of the series that really helped build LucasArts into the legendary studio that they would eventually become. Well, this and obviously Star Wars, but that's not the point. May they rest in peace. I have a copy of Escape from Monkey Island, which is actually the fourth game in the series, but I figured I'd just sort of dive right in anyway. I have a degree in film, and so these games that are really focused more on telling a story than anything else are always very appealing for me, and the Monkey Island series is one of the first to be known for doing that. Escape from Monkey Island starts off with a brief rundown of who's who and their relationships with each other. Since this was my first time playing any of these games, this was actually really helpful and it did a decent job of setting things up just enough that I wasn't lost or confused about who these people are. Like the previous games in the series, players take control of Guybrush Threepwood, who can best be described as oblivious. But that is one hell of an awesome name though. Guybrush has just married Elaine, the love of his life and governor of Melee Island, and the game begins as they are returning from their honeymoon. When they arrive back on Melee Island, they find their home under siege by Catapult. And that's only the start of their problems. Series bad guy LeChuck has returned, and this time he's teamed up with an Australian real estate tycoon named Ozzy Mandra. Together they plan to use an ancient artifact called the Ultimate Insult to drive all the pirates away from Melee Island and the surrounding Tri-Island area. And so Guybrush sets out to find the Ultimate Insult before LeChuck and Mandrill can get their hands on it. This game has a great story and a fantastic sense of humor. I love all the fourth wall jokes and subtle winks to the player. The humor really makes playing through this game a very enjoyable experience. And I love that there is so much going on with the story, because there really isn't much going on with the gameplay. Gameplay primarily consists of exploring the islands, talking to NPCs, gathering clues for puzzles, and using items that you gather throughout your adventure to solve those puzzles. And on a quick side note, is it just me, or does the gubernatorial seal of Melee Island totally look like a butt plug? A lot of puzzles in this game can be really hard to figure out, and not necessarily because they're cryptic, but just because the solutions are so ridiculous. Take for example one of the earliest puzzles in the game, where you have to get this guy with the catapult to stop hurling rocks at your house. To achieve this, you have to take a pop tire from another part of the island and put it around one of the cactuses in front of your house. Then. You have to distract the catapult guy by offering him a snack and fiddle around with his controls while he isn't looking. Then he'll fire the catapult at the cactus, and the pop tire around the cactus will catch the boulder like a slingshot and launch it right back at him. What kind of fever dream were the developers having when they were writing this sh How the heck was anyone supposed to guess that you need to put that pop tire around the cactus? There is not a single person in the entire world who has ever looked at a tire and thought, that should go around a cactus. Even though the puzzles are really tricky, the gameplay itself is actually pretty simple. Once again, there really isn't much to it, but that simplicity also helps this game not feel quite as dated as other games from around this time period that I've played lately. This was the first game in the series to use 3D graphics, and it's obvious that they wanted to keep the look as similar to the previous 2D games as they could. Even 20 years later, this cartoonish look is still very visually appealing and it would probably look even better if the HDMI connection I have for my PS2 didn't stretch out the image. I sort of wish that there was more content to this game. Outside of progressing the story, there really isn't much to do. And since this was before player choice really made a difference with these sort of games, I can't really find much motivation to try and play through it again. And the only thing that changes in every playthrough are the solutions to the monkey combat stuff towards the end of the game. Don't even f***ing get me started on monkey combat. Even with the walkthrough, that shit is the most f***ing frustrating part of the entire goddamn game. All the major story beats will play out the same way every playthrough, and the only new things that you can really hope to find are some extra jokes and easter eggs hidden throughout the world. Overall, I would say that this game has aged incredibly well. It's really easy to find a walkthrough online, and with how ridiculous many of these puzzles are, I feel like that's sort of the way to go if you're going to play through the game today. And it's also really short. Using a guide, it took me a little more than 8 hours to finish. It's another game where if you find a copy of it, this is a great way to spend your weekend. Thank you so much for watching my review of Escape from Monkey Island. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and let me know about it in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I upload every Saturday. Follow me on Twitter, and I hope to see you next time.